Well then, Mr. Croft. You see? What did I tell you? What did you tell him? Inspector, I I, I think Miss Burling uh, ought to be excused uh, any more of this questioning. She she nothing more to tell you. She's uh, she's had a long and uh, exciting and tiring day. We 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 were celebrating our engagement, you know, and and, and now she's uh, she's obviously had about as uh, as much as she can stand. You heard her earlier. He means I am getting hysterical now. And are you, Miss Burling? Probably. Well, then. I do not want to keep you here. I have no more questions to ask you. No. But you haven't finished asking questions, have you? No. You see, Gerald? Then I'm staying, Inspector. Why, why should you? It's... It's bound to be unpleasant and disturbing. And you think young women ought to be protected against unpleasant and disturbing things? Isn't that so, Mr. Croft? If possible, yes. Yeah. Well, we both know one young woman who wasn't, don't we? I, um, I suppose I asked for that. Be careful you don't ask for more, Gerald. I, I only meant it to say to you, Sh Sheila, why, why stay when you hate it? Well, it can be any worse for me. And who knows? It might get better. I see. What do you see? You've been through it. And now you want to see somebody else put through it. So that's what you think of me. Well, I'm glad I realized that in time, Gerald. No, no, I, Sh Sheila, I, I, I didn't mean it like, like did no, you? no. Stop. Yes, you did. And if you'd really loved me, you couldn't have said that. You listened to that nice story about me. I had that girl sacked from Millwards, and now you've made up your mind that I must obviously be a selfish, vindictive creature. No, I... I, I, I neither said that, nor even suggested it. Then why say I want to see somebody else put through it? That's not what I mean at all. All right, then. I'm, I'm sorry. I really am, Sheila. Yes, but you don't believe me. And that's just the wrong time not to believe me. Allow me, Miss Burlick. Mr. Croft. I can tell you why Miss Burling wants to stay on and why she says it might be better for her if she did. A girl died tonight. A pretty, lively sort of girl who never did anybody any harm. But she died in a misery and agony, hating her oh, life. Don't, please, Inspector, please, I can't stop thinking about it already as it is. Now, Miss Burling here 
has just been made to understand what she did to this girl. She feels responsible. And if she leaves us now and doesn't hear any more, then she'll feel that she's entirely to blame. She'll feel alone with her responsibility for the rest of tonight, or tomorrow, or the next day. Yes, yes, that's it. And and I know I am to blame, and, and I'm desperately sorry, but I can't believe, I mean, I, I won't believe it's simply my fault that in the end she, she committed suicide. That would be too horrible. You see, Miss Berlink, and Mr. Croft, we have to share something. And if there is nothing else to share, then we shall share our guilt. Yes. That's true. But, you know, there's something I don't understand about you, Inspector. There is nothing to understand. If, if there were, there would be no reason why you should. Good evening, Inspector. Good evening, madam. I'm Mrs. Burling. You know. Um, my husband has to just explain why you're here and while we'll be glad to tell you anything you want to know, I don't think we can help you much. No, mother, please. What's the matter, Sheila? <laughs> I know it sounds silly, but... Oh, what does? You see, I feel you're beginning it all wrong. And I'm afraid you'll say or do something that you'll be sorry for afterwards. I don't know what you're talking about here. Well, we all started like that. So confident, so pleased with ourselves until he began asking questions. I see. You seem to have made a great impression on my child, Inspector. We often do on the young ones. Mm. They're more um, <clears throat> impressionable. Sheila, you're looking tired, dear. I think you ought to go to bed and forget about this absurd business. Oh, you'll feel better in the morning. Mother, I couldn't possibly go. Trust me, no nothing would be worse for me now. We we've settled all that. I'm staying until I know why this girl committed suicide. Oh, surely that's nothing but morbid curiosity. No, it isn't. Please, don't contradict me like that, Sheila. And in any case, I don't suppose for a moment that any of us can understand why the girl committed suicide. <laughs> I mean, girls of that class. Mother, mother, don't, please. For your own sake as well as ours, you mustn't try to... Mustn't what? Really, <laughs> Sheila? You mustn't try to build a kind of wall between us and the inspector. And this girl, actually. Because if we do, then the inspector will just break it down. And it will be all the worse when he does. I don't understand you, Sheila. Do you, inspector? Yes, I do. I and beg your right. pardon. I said yes, I do understand her. And I also said that she is right. Well, that, I consider, is a trifle impertinent, <laughs> inspector. <laughs> Really? Now, what is it, child? I don't, I, I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps it's because <laughs> trifle is such a, I don't know, it's, it's such a, well, it's In not, any case, why? Mother, do stop before it's too late. If you mean that the inspector will take offense. No, no, no. Mrs. Burling, I never take offense. I'm glad to hear it, Inspector. Though I must say that it seems to me that we have more reason for taking offense. Let us leave offense out of it, shall we? I think we'd better. So do I. I'm the one talking to the Inspector now, if you two don't mind. Inspector, I realize that you may have to conduct some sort of uh, inquiry, but I must say that so far you seem to be conducting it in a rather peculiar, not to mention offensive manner. 
you know, of course, that my husband was Lord Mayor only two years ago. Uh, and that he's still a magistrate, I might add. M- Mrs. Berling, um, the, the inspector n- knows all that. And I, I, I don't think it's a, it's a particularly good idea to remind him oh, it's about crazy. all It's crazy. It's crazy. Stop it, mother. Really. Yes. Now, what was that about Mr. Burling? My husband is coming back in a moment, Inspector. He's just talking to my son, Eric, who seems to be in an excitable, silly mood. What's the matter with him? Eric. Oh, I'm afraid he may have had rather too much to drink tonight. We were having a little... Is he used to drinking? No, of course not. He's only a boy. No, he is a young man. Oh. And some young men drink far too much, Mrs. Burlake. And Eric is one of them. Sheila! What, what, honestly, I don't want to get poor Eric into trouble. He's probably enough trouble already. But really, we must stop these silly pretenses now. This isn't the time to pretend that Eric isn't used to drink. He's been steadily drinking for the last two years. This isn't true. Uh, Gerald, you know him. And you're a man, you must know it isn't true. Gerald? Mr. Croft, Uh, is it true? um, I'm afraid it is, you know. Uh, Actually, I've... um, I've never seen much of him outside the house, uh, but well, I um, I have gathered uh, the idea that um, he does drink pretty hard. And this is the time you choose to tell me. Yes, yes, of course it is. And that's what I mean when I when I talked about building up a wall that's sure to be knocked flat. It makes it all harder to bear. But it's you. And not the inspector here who's doing it, Sheila. Yes, but don't you see? He hasn't started on you yet. Inspector, if necessary, I shall be glad to answer any questions you wish to ask me. Though naturally, I don't know anything about this girl. We shall see. Mrs. Burlock. Indeed. I've been trying to persuade Derek to go to bed, but the boy just won't. He keeps saying you told him to stay up, Inspector, did you? Yes, I did. And why did you do that? Simply, Mr. Burling, because I shall want to talk to him. Well, I can't see why you should do that, but... If you must, then I suggest you do it now. Have him in, get it, get it over with, then let the lad go. I'm afraid I cannot do that yet. I'm sorry, but he will have to wait. Now, look here, Inspector. He must wait his turn, Mr. Burling. Now you see, Mother? No, I don't. And please, be quiet, Sheila. Inspector, as I've told you before, I don't like the tone nor the way you're handling this inquiry. And I don't propose to give you much rope at the end of it. You needn't give me any rope, Mr. Burling. <laughs> no, he's actually giving us the wor- the rope. So we'll hang ourselves. Sybil, what's the matter with that child? Overexcited, Arthur, and she refuses to go. Well, Inspector, come along. What is it you want to know? At the end of January last year, this girl, Eva Smith, had to leave Millwards because Miss Burling compelled them to discharge her. And then she stopped being Eva Smith, looking for a job, and became Daisy Ren with um, other ideas. Mr. Croft. When did you first get to know her? What? What? Where did you get the idea that I did know her? 
Oh, it's no use, Gerald. You're wasting your time. As soon as I mentioned the name Daisy Renton, it was well obvious you'd known her. You'd given yourself away at once. Of course he did. And anyhow, I had already known. When, uh, when and where did you first meet her? All right, all right, if you must have it. I, I, uh, I met her first uh, sometime in March last year uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the Stars Bar at, uh, at the Palace. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, the, the Palace Music Bar, uh, the, uh, the Palace Music Hall uh, here in, uh, in Bromley. Well, we do think you meant Buckingham Palace, obviously. Thanks, Sheila. You're going to be a great help, I can see. You've said your part, and you're obviously going to hate this. So, so why on earth don't you leave us to it? Nothing would induce me. I want to understand exactly what happens when a man says he's so busy at the works that he hardly ever finds time to come and see the girl he's supposed to be in love with. You know, I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yes, Mr. Croft, um, go on please. In the stalls bar the Palace Variety Theatre here in Bromley. I, um... Uh... Well, I happened to look in one night. Uh, after after a long dull day, and uh, and uh, as the show uh, wasn't very bright, I uh, well I went down into the bar for uh, for a drink. Um, it's um, it's a favorite haunt of uh, of women of the town. Women, women of the town. Yes, yes, Gerald, but I see no point in mentioning the subject, especially since Sheila... It would be much better if Sheila didn't listen to this story at all. Like, you're forgetting that I am supposed to be engaged to the hero of it. Go on, Gerald. You went down into the bar, which is a favorite hound of the women of town, and then... I'm glad I amused you. Come along, Mr. Croft. What happened? I, um, I, I didn't propose uh, to to stay long down there. I, uh, I hate those uh, those hard-eyed, dull-faced women. But uh, then I, uh, I, I noticed a girl who looked quite different. She. Um, she was very pretty, soft, uh, soft brown hair and, and big, dark, big dark eyes. Oh my God. What seems to be the matter, Mr. Croft? I, uh, sorry, I, well, I, I've suddenly realized, uh, taking it in properly, that she's dead. She, yes, she dead. is dead. Yes. And between us, we killed her. There we go, Sheila, again with the nonsense. You wait, mother. Go on, Mr. Croft. <coughs> she, she looked young and, uh, and fresh and, and, and charming. And all to get out of place down there, um, and and obviously she wasn't enjoying herself. Uh, old uh, old Joe McGarty, half drunk and, and goggle eyed, had wedged her into into a corner, and uh, with that obscene uh, fat carcass. Of but him. there's no need to be disgusting, Gerald. Please, and surely you don't mean Alderman McGarty. No, of course I do, Mrs. Burling. Uh, he's well, he's a notorious womanizer, as as well as being as well as being one of the worst uh, sots and rocks here in Bromley. Quite right, Miss. Well, really, Alderman McGarty. I must say, we are learning something tonight. <laughs> of course, we are. But 
everybody knows about this horrible Bancarthy. A girl I know had to, well, had to see him at the town hall one afternoon, and she only escaped with a torn blouse. Sheila! Mr. Croft, please, go on. The, the girl saw me um, looking at her and uh, and then gave me a glance uh, that was that was nothing less, nothing more than uh, a cry for help, really. Uh, so uh, so I went across and uh, and told Joe McGarty some nonsense uh, that, that that the manager at the, the hotel had a message uh, uh, for him or, or or something like that. And you know, got him out of the way, and then, uh, and then I told the girl that um, that if she she didn't want uh, if she didn't want any more of that sort of thing, uh, she she'd better let me take her out of there. She, and where she did you go? Once. Where did you go, Mr. Croft? Uh, we. Well, we we went along to the county hotel. Which, uh, which, which I knew would be would be quiet at um, at that time of, of uh, the night, um, uh, and and there we we had a drink uh, or two and we talked. Did she drink much at the time? No, no, she uh, she only had a, a port uh, and a lemonade. Or you know some such concoction. Uh, well, all she wanted was was to talk, uh, a little friendliness, uh, and uh, and I gathered that uh, that Joe McGarty's advances had uh, had left her quite quite shaken, uh, as well they might. She tell you anything about herself? Yes, y yes, she. Uh, I uh, um, I asked her questions about herself. Uh, she told me her name was Daisy Renton, that uh, that she'd lost both of her parents, and that she came uh, originally from from somewhere outside Bromley. Yes, uh, she also told me she'd uh, she'd had a job at at uh, one of the works here. Uh, but she she had had to leave after a strike. Uh, she she said something about the shop too, yeah. Uh, but uh, but wouldn't say which it was, and, and and she was deliberately vague about what happened. I I I couldn't get any exact details from her about herself, but, but just because she she felt I was interested and and I'm friendly. But uh, but uh, at the same at the same time she wants to be Daisy Renton, and and then not Eva Smith. Uh, yeah, in fact I heard that name for the first time tonight. Um, uh, what she did let sleep though, obviously she didn't want she didn't mean to uh, was was that she was desperately hard up and at the moment uh, she was actually hungry. I. Uh, so, so I I made the people at uh, at the hotel uh, find some food for her. And then, Mr. Croft, you decided to um, keep her as your mistress. What do you mean, a mistress? Of course, Mother. It was obvious from the start. Go on, Gerald. Don't mind, Mother. I uh, I discovered. Not, not that night, but uh, two nights later, when uh, when we met again. This time, uh, not accidentally, of course. That uh, that in fact she hadn't a penny and and was going to be turned out of of uh, the miserable back room she had. So uh, it uh, it happened that a friend of mine, uh, Charlie Brunswick. Had uh, had gone to Canada for uh, for six months, and uh, had uh, had let me uh, have the key of um, of a nice little set of rooms he he had in Morgan Terrace. Uh, he uh, had asked me, uh, 
to keep an eye on them and uh, and use them if I uh, if I wanted to. So uh, so I insisted on uh, on uh, Daisy moving into into one of those rooms and uh, and I made her and I made her take some money, you know, to to keep her going there. Uh, now, Inspector. I want you to understand that that I didn't install her there so that I could make love to her. I made her go to Morgan Terrace because because I was sorry for her and, and, and <clears throat> I didn't like the idea of her going back to the palace bar. I didn't ask for anything in return. I see, Mr. Croft. But why are you saying that to him? You ought to be saying that to me. I suppose I ought really. I, I, I'm sorry, Sheila. Somehow I. No, somehow he... I know. Somehow he makes you. But, Mr. Croft, she became your mistress nonetheless. Yes. I, uh. I suppose it was inevitable. She, she was young and, and pretty and, and warm hearted and in intensely grateful I became at once the most important person in her life you understand that sir yes she was a woman she was lonely she got attached to you so it happened were you in love with her Mr. Croft just what I was going to ask. I really must protest such a question. Why is she protesting, Mr. Burling? It was you who turned the girl out in the first place. <laughs> well, I, I only did what any employer might have done, and, and I still don't see why my daughter, a, a young unmarried girl, is being dragged Your into Your daughter, Mr. Burling, is not living on the moon. She's here in Bromley. As well. Yes, and it was I who turned the girl out of her job at Millward. And I am supposed to be engaged to Gerald. And I'm not a child, don't forget. I've a right to know. So, Gerald, were you in love with her? Uh, yeah. It's hard to say. I, I, I didn't feel about her. As you felt about me. Of course not. You were the wonderful fairy prince. You must have adored it, Gerald. All right. All right. I, I did for a time. Nearly, nearly any man would have done so. You know what? That's probably about the best thing you've said tonight. At least it's honest. Did you... um? Did you go and see her every night? No, no, I, I, I wasn't telling you a complete lie when, uh, when I said that I'd been very busy at the works all that time. We, we were very busy. But, but yeah, I, of course, I did get to see a good deal of her. I don't think we want any further details of this I disgusting affair. Gerald, I... I do. And anyhow, we haven't had any details yet. And you're not going to have any. And Mrs. Burling, you know, it, it wasn't disgusting. It's disgusting to me, Gerald. Yes, but after all, you didn't come into this, did you, Mother? Inspector, is is there is there anything else you want you want to know that you ought to know? Yes, Mr. Croft. When did this um, affair end? I uh, I can tell you exactly. In uh, in the first week of September, I. Uh, I had to go away for for several weeks then, on uh, on business, uh, and uh, by that time Daisy knew it was coming to an end, so uh, so I broke it off definitely. 
be before I went. How did she take it? Uh, better, better than I hoped. Better than I hoped. Yeah, I. Uh, she. She was. Uh, she was very gallant uh, about it. That was nice for you. No, it wasn't. She. She told me she'd been. Uh, she'd been happier than ever, than she'd ever been before. But. That she knew she couldn't last. Uh, it was couldn't last. Hadn't expected it to last. She didn't blame me at all. No, I wish to God she had now. Perhaps I'd feel better about it. Well, I assume that she had to move out of those rooms. Yes, we. We'd agreed about that. She'd, she saved a little money on what I'd allowed her during the summer. She lived very economically in that. And uh, I didn't want to take more from me. But, but I insisted on a parting gift of enough money. Um, it wasn't very much uh, to, to seek her through, through to the end of the year. Did she tell you? What she proposed to do after you'd left her? No, no, no. She she refused to talk about that. I, I, I got the idea once or twice from from what she said that uh, that she thought if uh, leaving Bromley, whether whether she did or not, I uh, I do not know. Did she? Yes. She went away for about two months to some seaside place. By, by herself? Yes. I think she went away to be alone, to be quiet, to remember all that had happened between you. How do you know that? She kept a rough sort of diary. And she said there that she had to go away and be quiet and remember, just to make it last longer, in her words. She felt there would never be anything as good again for her. So she had to make it last longer. I see. She, uh, well, 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 I never saw her again. And, and that's all I can tell you, Inspector. And that's all I want to know from you, Mr. Croft. Uh, in that, in that case, as I'm, as I'm rather more upset by this business than than I appear, than I probably appear to be. And uh, well, I'd like to be alone for a while, sir. Uh, and I'd be glad if you'd let me go. Go where, Mr. Croft? Home. No, no, I, I, I'll just go out, uh, walk about for a while, if you don't mind, I, I'll come back. Very well, Mr. Croft. But just in case you forget or decide not to come back, Gerald, I think you'd better take this with you. Let's see. Well, I was expecting this. I don't dislike you as I did an hour ago. In fact, in some odd way, I, I rather respect you more than I ever did before. I knew anyhow you were lying about those months last year when you hardly came near me. I knew there'd been something fishy about that time. And now at least you've been honest. And I believe when you told us that, um, when you told us about the way you helped her at first, you know, just out of pity. And it was my fault, really, that, that she was so desperate when you first, when you first met her. But this has made a difference. You and I are in the same people who sat down to dinner here. We'd have to start all over again, getting to know each other and. No, Sheila, I'm not defending Gerald by any means, but 
you must understand that a lot of young men... Uh, Don't they, interfere, uh, please, Father. Gerald knows what I mean, and you apparently don't. Yes, I, I know what you mean, but I'm coming back, if I may. All right. Well, really, I don't know. I think we've just come to an end of this wretched business that has... I do think so. Uh, now, please, excuse me. You know, Inspector, you never showed him that photograph of her. No, it was not necessary. And I deemed it better not to. You have a photograph of this girl. Yes, I do. And I think you'd better look at it, Mrs. Burlick. I don't see any particular reason why I should be looking at the photograph. <laughs> Probably there isn't, but you'd better take a look at it. Very well. All right, then. She recognize you. No. Why should I, Inspector? Well, um, of course, she might have changed lately. But I cannot believe she could have changed so much. I don't understand you, Inspector. You mean you do not choose to do so? I meant what I said. You're not telling me the truth. I beg your pardon! Look here, Inspector, I'm not going to stand here and take this. You'll apologize to my wife at once. Apologize for what, Mr. Berlin? For doing my duty? No, for being so offensive about it. I'm a public man, you public know. Public man? Mr. Berlin have privileges as well as responsibilities. Possibly, but you weren't asked to come here to talk to me about my responsibilities. <laughs> Let's hope not, though I'm beginning to wonder. Oh, does that mean anything, Sheila? <sighs> well, it means that we've no excuse for putting on airs, and that we've, if we've any sense at all, we won't even try. Father threw this girl out because she asked for decent wages. I went and pushed her further out, right into the streets. Why? Because she was pretty and I was angry. Gerald set her up as his, as his mistress and then dropped her when it suited him. And now you're pretending you don't recognize her from that photograph? I admit, I don't know why you should, but I know jolly well that you did in fact recognize her from the way that you looked. And, and if you're not telling the truth, then why should the inspector apologize? And can't you see, both of you, you're making it worse. That was the front door again. Gerald must have come back. Unless your son has just gone out. I'll just go and see. Mrs. Burling, let me put this differently. You are a member, I've been led to understand, a prominent member of the Bromley Women's Charity Organization, aren't you? Go on, Mother. You might as well admit it. Yes, she is, Inspector. Why? Correct me if I'm wrong, but... It's an organization to which women in distress can appeal for help in various forms, right? Yes, we've done a great deal of useful work in uh, helping uh, deserving cases. I've uh, also been led to believe that there was a meeting of the interviewing committee two weeks ago. Yes, I dare say there was. You know very well there was, Mrs. Burling. You were in the chair. And if I was in the chair, Inspector, what business is it of yours? It seems that I have to tell you in plain words. 
That must have been Eric. We just heard at the door. Have you been up to his room, Arthur? Yes, and I, I called out on both landings. It, it must have been him going out. Silly boy. Where can he have gone to? I can't possibly imagine, but but he was in one of his excitable, queer moods again, and even though we don't need him here, how, oh, how can he... Oh, but we do need him here, Mr. Burling, and if he's not back soon, I shall have to go and find him. Well, Inspector, he's probably just gone out to cool off. He'll be back soon. I surely hope so. And why should you hope so? I'll explain why when you've answered my questions, Mrs. Burling. Oh. Is there any reason whatsoever why my wife should answer questions from you, Inspector? Yes, and a very good reason for that matter. You will remember that Mr. Croft told us, and quite truthfully, I believe, that he hadn't spoken to or seen Eva Smith since last September. But Mrs. Sperling spoke to and saw her only two weeks ago. Mother! Sybil, is this true? Yes, quite true. And she appealed to your organization for help, didn't she? Yes, she did. But not as Eva Smith. No, nor as Daisy Renton. As what, then? First, she called herself Mrs. Burling. What? Mrs. Burling? Yeah. I think it was simply a piece of gross impertinence, quite deliberate. And naturally, that was one of the things that prejudiced me against her case, obviously. And I should think so, Sybil, damned impudence. So you do admit to being prejudiced against her case? Absolutely. Mother, she's died a horrible death. Don't forget that. I'm very sorry, but I think she had only herself to blame. Was it to your influence as the most prominent member of the committee that help was refused to the girl? Possibly. Was it or was it not your influence? Yes, it was, Inspector. I didn't like her manner. She impertinently made use of our name. Though she pretended afterwards, it just happened to be the first she thought of. She had to admit after I began questioning her that she had no claim to the name, that she wasn't married, and that the story she told at first about... Uh, a husband who deserted her was quite false. It didn't take me long to get the truth, or some of the truth, out of her. Why did she want help? You know very well why she wanted help, Inspector. No, I do not, Mrs. Burlake. I know why she needed help. But as I wasn't there, I do not know what she asked from your committee. And I don't think we need to discuss it. You have no hope whatsoever of not discussing it, Mrs. Burling. If you think you can bring any pressure to bear upon me, Inspector, you're quite mistaken. Unlike the other three, I did nothing I'm ashamed of or that won't bear investigation. The girl asked for assistance. We were asked to look carefully into the claims made upon us. I wasn't satisfied with hers. She seemed to me simply not a good case. And so I used my influence to have it refused. And in spite of what's happened to the girl since, I consider I did my duty. So if I prefer not to discuss it any further, you have no power to make me change my mind. Yes, I have all the power I need to do. No, you haven't. Simply because I've done nothing wrong and you know it, Inspector. You did something terribly wrong and you know it and you're going to spend the rest of your life regretting it. I wish you'd been with me tonight in the infirmary. You would have seen 
Oh no, please, Inspector, I don't you understand? I've imagined that already. Fine then. Then the next time you imagine it, just remember that this girl was going to have a child. No. Oh, oh Christ. Christ. Horrible. How could she have killed herself with a child? Because she had been turned out and turned down too many times. This was the end. Mother, you must have known. Of course she knew. It was because she was going to have a child that she went for assistance to your mother's committee. Look, Inspector, this this isn't Gerald Croft. No, no, Mr. Burling. Nothing to do with him. Thank goodness. So I don't know why I should care now. Mrs. Burling, you have nothing further to tell me. I'll tell you what I told her, Inspector. Go and look for the father of the child. This whole business, after all, is his responsibility. But that doesn't make it any the less yours. She came to you for help. At a time when no woman could have needed it more. And you not only refused it yourself, but saw to it that the others refused it as well. She was there all alone, friendless, almost penniless, desperate. She needed not only money, but advice, sympathy, friendliness. You've had children. You must have known what she was feeling. And you slammed the door in her face. Mother, I think it was cruel and vile what you did. I I must say, Sybil, that when this comes out at the inquest, it, it's not going to do us much good. I mean, if the press catches oh, wind of this, it's... it, both of you. And please remember, before you start accusing me of anything again, that it wasn't I who had her turn out of her employment, Arthur. Which probably began it all. Inspector, in the circumstances, I think I was more than justified. The girl had begun by telling us a pack of lies. Afterwards, when I got at the truth, I discovered that she knew who the father was. She was quite certain about that, in fact. And so I told her it was her business to make him responsible if he refused to marry her. And in my opinion, he ought to be compelled to. Then he must at least support her. And what did she reply to that? Oh, a lot of silly nonsense. What was it? Whatever it was, I know it made me finally lose all patience with her. She was giving herself ridiculous airs. She was claiming elaborate fine feelings and scruples that were simply absurd in a girl in her position. Her position now, Mrs. Burling, is that she lies with a burnt out inside on a slab. No, no, Inspector, there Do is... Do not stammer no. and yammer at me again, Mr. Burling. I am beginning to lose all my patience with you. Mrs. Burling, what did she say? She said that the father was only a youngster, silly and wild and drinking too much. There couldn't be any question of marrying him. It would be wrong for them both. He had given her money, but she didn't want to take any more money from him. And why didn't she want to take any more money from him? All a lot of nonsense again, and I didn't believe a word of it. You seem to misunderstand me, Mrs. Perling. I am not asking you if you believed it. I want to know what she said. Why didn't she want to take any more money from this boy? Oh, she had some fancy reason, all right, as if a girl of that sort would ever refuse money, please. I warn you, Miss... I warn you, Mrs. Burling. You're making it far worse for yourself. What reason did she give for not taking any more money? 
first story was that he said something one night when he was drunk that gave her the idea that it wasn't his money. And where had he gotten this money from then? He'd stolen it. So let me get this straight. She'd come to you for assistance because she didn't want to take stolen money. That's the story she finally told after I refused to believe her original one. That she was a married woman who'd been deserted by her husband. I didn't see any reason to believe that one story should be any truer than the other one. Therefore, Inspector, you're quite wrong to suppose I shall regret what I did. But if her story were true, if this boy had been giving her stolen money, then she came to you for help because she wanted to keep this youngster out of any more trouble. Isn't that so? Possibly, but it sounded ridiculous to me. So I was perfectly justified in advising my committee not to allow her claim for assistance. It seems to me that you do not feel remorse even now when you know what happened to the girl. I'm sorry. And I do have remorse because she should have come to such a horrible end. But I accept no blame for it. Not at all. Who is to blame then? First, the girl herself. For letting father and me have her chucked out of her jobs. Secondly, I blame the young man who was the father of the child she was going to have. If, as she said, he didn't belong to her class and was some drunken young idler, then that's all the more reason why he shouldn't escape. He should be made an example of. After all, if the girl's death is due to anybody, then it's due to him. And if the story be true, that he was stealing money. There's no point in even assuming that this story... But suppose we do. Then he'd be entirely responsible. Because the girl wouldn't have come to us, she wouldn't have been refused assistance if it hadn't been for him, and so... So, he's the chief culprit, anyhow. Certainly. And he ought to be dealt with very severely as I'm right. not. Mother, stop. Stop. Be quiet, Sheila. No, but don't you see? You're behaving like a hysterical child tonight. And if you take some steps, Inspector, to find this young man and then make sure that he's compelled to confess in public his responsibility, instead of staying here asking quite unnecessary questions, then you really would be doing your duty. Don't you worry, Mrs. Merling. I shall do my duty. I'm glad to hear it, then. Make an example of the young man, right? Public confession of responsibility and all that sort. Certainly. And I consider it your duty. And now, no doubt, Inspector, you'd like to say good night. Not yet. I'm waiting. Waiting for what? To do my duty. Now, Mother, do you see? Oh, but surely, I mean it, it's ridiculous to even, I mean... Look, look, Inspector, you're, you're not trying to tell us that, 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 that my boy is, is, is somehow mixed up in this... If he is, Mr. Burling, then we know what to do, don't we? Your wife has just told us. My God, but, but look here, Inspector. I don't believe it. I, I won't. I won't believe this. I begged you and begged you to stop.
Thank you.